And now we take a look at Flick Wars, a strategic and tactical dexterity-based war game. One note before we start, Andrew Tolson did provide us with a review copy of the retail version of Flick Wars. Right, it's also worth noting in uh, the effort of full disclosure that I kind of have a long-term relationship with Andrew at this point. Not that I'm constantly in contact with him or he's a personal friend, but this is actually the third time I've looked at Flick Wars. Initially, I took a look at a prototype version way back in 2014, back when I used to write on the Windsor Gaming Resource blog, when he first tried to kickstart the game. And I have to admit, he failed that didn't fit, uh, succeed at funding at the time, which a big part of that was games in 2014 on Kickstarter just wasn't as big a thing. But I do think there were some improvements. Later, I reviewed the print and play version, which is currently for sale on game crafter you can go buy a copy of the print play version of flick wars and now i'm back again with flick wars but this time looking at the retail version uh this was created after a later and much more successful kickstarter so just to note that the board game geek page for this game is a bit of a mashup yeah. you're going to find pictures of basically every version all jammed onto the 2019 editions page yeah, I was having difficulty even trying to tell him, like looking at pictures, I'm like, whoa, that's from the other edition I had. So it is a little confusing. Um, on the blog, all the pictures I will be sharing will be of the retail version. So the retail version of Flick Wars was designed by Sean Astin and Andrew Tolson, features art from Sean Astin and Peter Walken. Was successfully kickstarted in 2017, but due to production delays, was not officially published until 2019 by Breaking Games. Flick Wars plays one to six players with games taking, I don't know, it totally depends on how many people you have and how good they are at flicking discs over uneven surfaces. I've had half hour games and I've had two hour games. It's definitely not a long one. This is not an epic, you know, Twilight Imperium kind of game, but it is very much going to depend on your skill level and the number of people playing. Now, for a look at what caused some of those delays, you can check out our unboxing video on YouTube. Yeah, this is not your usual board game box. I had a hard time filming this one just because of the setup I use for unboxing because this, due to this being a dexterity game, it's got some unusual components for a board game. Like for one, the box size is weird. It's a huge long box. Uh, people live can probably see it behind me here. Um, it is a size I've got to admit I hate. Like, I don't know. I still don't know where this is going to go in my basement, in my game room. There is not a good spot to fit this on there now the reason the box is so big is because this version of flick wars one of the major features is a neoprene battle mat for fighting your battles over now this mat's 24 inches by 30 inches and the box is made so you can roll up the mat and fit it without folding now i gotta say this is one dang nice mat like it really is it has this like really nice looking kind of sci-fi planet looking terrain that looks just sci-fi enough and once you get the 3d contours it just looks really cool and this is the kind of mat that i plan on stealing to use in other games that could be improved by having a battle mat um if you watch our gloomhaven live streams we might start using this as a backdrop if it doesn't throw off the colors too much because this is a one nice mat well it's nice Nice touch that you can roll and not fold the mat in that box. I do wonder if it is worth the hassle of this ungainly box. Yeah, it's 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 a toughie to be honest. It really is. I get into the actual game. So you're going to start a game of Flick Wars. Um, you're going to pick a faction. There are six different factions. They're all unique, all asymmetric. Uh, you're going to have a different number of units, at least three different unit types. Some of the armies have four different unit types. Each unit type has unique abilities. Uh, just as a quick example, the purple faction are your StarCraft Zerg, right? It's a lot of low-cost units that are quick to deploy, but have very short attack ranges. Whereas the red factions are these big, massive mechs that are very expensive, but can move really quickly and have long range. That's just two of the six, and all the rest are kind of in between those two. Players are going to take their faction's deck of cards, and what they're going to do is each deck has multiple units for each unit type, so multiple cards. So you're going to pick one card to represent each of your unit types. Now, this card is going to give you the unit cost, the range it can attack from, and any special abilities. Uh, there's also, as I talking about our earlier topic today of onboarding and making games more approachable, every deck also includes two basic cards, which is meant to be used the first time you play, which are low cost, really simple. They don't have any special abilities on them. So nothing out of the ordinary, really, for anyone who's played miniature games, yep. miniature war games. 
Yeah, that's exactly what this basically is, is a skirmish war game. Because after you build your armies, you decide the player order. You're going to set up your HQs on the edge of the map. Uh, these are kind of cardboard, and you fold them over, and they tuck in. It, it looks cool enough. Uh, the exact layout is based on the number of players. Uh, like for three players, one person starts two inches on one side, another player is two inches on another, and the third player is in the middle of the side, and it actually makes a nice triangle. Uh, once everyone's placed their HQs, players are going to uh, now play scenery. Now, scenery is done using these wooden half spheres. These can be placed either on or under the map. This continues around the table until all six of these scenery discs are, are placed. What's really cool is the placing under. This is one of the brilliant things in this game. By placing these under a neoprene mat, you end up creating this 3D battlefield filled with hills and valleys. This is something I've never seen in a flicking game before. Now, note, uh, the rules do say you can use anything. It just happens to come with these wooden half circles. Like, you can use stuff that happens to be around your game room. I remember putting some wooden bowls under my play mat and throwing, like, a candle holder out on top before when playing. Just a note, your cat probably won't appreciate being used under the mat, even if it is asleep when you start. Though mobile terrain shifting in the middle of the game could make for a very interesting feature. Now, once everyone has uh, their army set up, you get 30 crystals. Um, these just look like your typical um, florist crystals. And you're going to use those to purchase two of your units to start on the map. They got to start near your base. Now, the goal of Flick Wars is to eliminate your target before you are eliminated yourself. Your target is player to your left, which means you're the target of the player on your right. Every other player is friendly to you. While you can bump anyone's pieces, you can only attack your target and the units of the players targeting you. A player is eliminated if at the end of the round they have no units left on the board. Certainly an obvious enough losing condition for a battle. Yep. Now, each round, players are going to pick between doing one of two things, either a command action or activating a unit. At the end of each round, there's a little bit of a cleanup thing where you get this that got accidentally flipped off the board and put them back on. During a command action, you're going to get two things. You get two of them. One of them is to move your units on the board. Note, move, not attack. Or deploy new units. So you can do two deploys or two moves and a move and a deploy or so on. To deploy a new unit, you just pay the cost in crystal shown on the card and put it out within range two of your base. Note, there's no way in this game to get new crystals. Once you have bought all your units, you're out. So no flick sappers who can invade the enemy base and steal their treasury. <laughs> Maybe we have an expansion possibility. Uh, possibly, I could see it. Now, moving in Flick Wars is, of course, done by flicking. You pick a unit, you flick it. If you happen to knock other things around while doing so, so be it. They end up where they land. The only additional rule is that if you aren't careful and flick one of your units into an enemy base, you destroy that unit. Not ideal for the dexterity uninclined. No. Now, the option, other option is to activate a unit. Now, when you activate a unit, you get one flick. Now, this could be a move flick, which I've already basically explained, or an attack flick. To attack, your unit has to be in range of an enemy unit. And there's uh, four range rulers included. Um, these are like, uh, I don't know if it's not inches, but like the longest range isn't very long is what I have to say. You've got to be pretty close to be able to attack. To attack, you again flick just like moving but if you hit your opponent's disc you destroy it flipping over to the debris side every tile's two-sided debris stays on the field being annoying and debris and getting in everyone's way next year flick damage control bulldozer and dump trucks to clear the battlefield just kidding <laughs> now along with this every unit in the game has special abilities uh these come into play when you activate them now most of these give units additional flicks, right? So, because otherwise you're never going to hit anything. You're going to move in and then you're just going to be sitting there waiting to be attacked, right? So any unit with blitz gets an additional flick if it starts its turn without any enemies nearby. Or a unit with speed gets a number of additional flicks. Like speed three gives you three additional flicks. Charge gives you an additional flick if you bump an enemy when moving. So you bump into them and then you can attack them right away. There are a ton of other abilities. Some are not flick based. There's like shield, which allows you to survive your first hit. A defender where no one can attack units that are in range three of that unit but you can attack it stuff like that all kinds of different abilities the kind of things you see in miniature war games unfortunately nothing that really helps those who aren't good at flicking things no not at all and that we'll get to in a bit because <laughs> after taking your one action um 
you do get a chance to spend crystals to take additional command actions. Uh, note, these can only be done on units that haven't activated that turn. So it's just another way to spend your money. Uh, we found most games, you're going to spend all your money you can to put out units, and you'll have one or two left over for those little bonus moves. We found those particularly useful when you make a bad move where you take a move action and get a little too close for comfort, and then you run away. Uh, play continues around the table until one player is eliminated, with the player targeting that player winning the game. Note, this does mean that it's possible for a player to mess up and cause someone else to win by attacking the wrong, taking out someone that isn't their target. Uh, in addition to these rules, there are a full set of cooperative rules. These were unlocked in the last Kickstarter. These also include the rules to play solo, which I thought was interesting. These cooperative rules have a team of players face off against a number of AI opponents. The opponent's abilities differ based on what faction you pick of the six, and they are ranked, like the orange faction is the easiest to beat and the black's the hardest. Um, players will be flicking their units as normal, but the enemy movement is all being driven by a card-based AI, where you're going to put down a card and then put another card facing another way, and it's going to tell you who they're going to target and how far they're going to move and so on. Movement for the bad guys, there's no flicking, they just use the range rulers. So like everything moves like range three towards whatever target the card says. The way the game works is players win if they defeat all the AI opponents, um, whereas the AIs win if they get a set number of hits against the player's base. So as a less than skilled flicker, I want to move with range roll, roll rulers too. Yeah. At that point though, you're just playing a normal miniature game. <laughs> Yes. So overall, uh, like I said, it, it's a it's a miniature skirmish game. It really is. It's it's you get a limited number of units on the battlefield. You need to wipe out your targets units. You can bring more units on. You start by building your armies by picking cards to represent them, set up the battlefield, determine who your target is, who's targeting you, put out your units and fight. The difference here, of course, is that movement and attacking is done by flicking instead of rolling dice or measuring range rulers. And that's where this game really stands or falls with most players. And that's exactly it, right? I personally have enjoyed flick boards going back to the first time I tried the prototype. Like I said, I've got a long working relationship with Andrew and that's because I dig this game. Back when then the bases were actually round discs that were on the battlefield and could move around and you could flick them. The crystals were plastic poker chips and I used, like I said, a candlestick and shoved a wooden bowl under the map at the time. And it's been interesting to see how the games evolved. And I got to say, I was genuinely happy when it funded on Kickstarter the second time because the, the, the tweaks he made seemed to have worked. And I really do think this game deserves to be out there. Yeah, and to be fair, you are a huge fan of flicking mm -hmm. games in general, be it cards, penguins, or what have you. Totally fair. I'm impressed by the, the end result, uh, the, this retail version. Uh, the game has increased from four to six factions. Um, everyone knows I like some asymmetry, so having six different factions that actually play different, feel different, is really nice to see. Uh, the wooden half spheres is a nice touch. Uh, like at least they give you something to do the 3D scenery with, not just relying on what you have in your basement or game room. And the included battle mat is nice. Like the fact it comes with a battle mat almost offsets the annoying size of the box. I, I, I don't know. I would have preferred the mat separate. Like send me the map in a tube, but then he got two different boxes, you're shipping and increased cost. And how does a retail store keep them together? I get that there's a problem, but I hate the size of that box. Yeah, the terrain method is definitely cool. Now, I was doing some research on neoprene today, and while the general opinion is only ever roll it, there are a number of ways to get creases out of neoprene, and the higher quality, thicker neoprene does tend to crease less obviously yeah. if it is folded in a box in the first place. Now, I just look at any of the legendary games from Upper Deck. They come with neoprene mats that you fold in half and put in the box, and the boxes are much more reasonably sized. Now, this is larger than those, and it might even be thicker, so I don't know. I, again, it is what it is. Uh, to, to be honest, the box is the worst part of this game. Like, it's huge. It's not that well made. Like, there's just cardboard dividers in it, and there's no real spot. They just kind of separate the various components, not holding them in place. I get admit, after my first game using this version, I just baggied all the factions separately and shoved them where they fit. Um, the overall production of this game, I'm sorry to say, feels a little subpar. Like, like you look at this game, and there's just something about it. You're like, yeah, yeah, this is an indie game funded on Kickstarter that's been self-published. 
which it is. So fair enough. It looks like you'd expect, I guess. Just things like the the card quality. Um, the half spheres are like look like something I picked up at you know uh, I don't know craft supply store. Michael says it, does, it doesn't yeah. doesn't look like a board game component. Um, the florist crystals, right? Like it just looks like something someone put together in their basement. It just doesn't have the polish you see in most modern board games, even modern Kickstarter games. Like it just lacks that punch. Yeah, combined with the extended delay in shipping the product after the Kickstarter, I don't doubt that this game may have left a bad taste in the mouth of many. It, to me, seems a lot like the cards, the rulers, and the faction discs are all you really need mm. to buy as the game. The mat, the crystals, uh, and lumps under your scenery can be really easily sourced locally with less hassle and potentially less cost. Mm -hmm. This would bring the game down to something of a much more reasonable shipping size, which makes it, again, easier to get into stores and onto shelves. And to be honest, what you just said still exists. You can still get the print-and-play version of the game. If you go to GameCraft, or you can order that, and that's what it is. It's it's the rule book and the, the rulers and the units, and then you supply the rest yourself. So that is still a valid option, but that's not the kind of thing you're going to find on your shop's floor shelf. And I, and I get it, right? That's the whole... Every miniature game has had this problem for years, right? What do you put in the box? Like, can now that everyone has armies, can I sell the latest version of Warhammer 40k by just putting out a hardcover rule book? Yeah. They tried that, it didn't work. And then they found out that people new into the hobby want everything, they want a range ruler, even though they have a tape measure at home, right? So I, I understand where where the company I'm sure was sitting here, the fence they were on trying to decide what to do. Now, as for these production shortcomings, I on a positive note, none of this affects the gameplay. And that is where this game shines. I really do dig this game. This is a very easy to teach game. It's quick to set up. It's, it's a full-fledged war game with a unique main mechanic. There's very little games doing something similar to this. Uh, the only other two that I can think of that are strategic dexterity games like this, that aren't just, you know, racing or, you know, flicking your penguins around a board is Flick Fleets which is a really cool game uh, using spaceships and flick them up, which is a cowboy and, and in Indian style game where you're, you flick to attack each other. Those are the two that come to mind. The thing is, this adds that 3D playing field, which lacks in both those other games. Both of those, you just set up your board. Uh, flick Fleet, you might put out some planets, but there's no like gravity or effects or anything. Whereas Flick them up, yeah, there's some cactuses you put out and stuff, but like that whole... Th neoprene mat with stuff shoved under it it's just so brilliant right like that's that's the killer app having things both under and over the mat brings it to the next level everyone i played this with instantly gets hooked that first time they make a bank shot going up the side of a hill and having it slide right into the perfect spot or taking out an enemy or doing a jump shot over a ridge into another valley stuff like that is what makes this game yeah i think this game is going to be a huge win for some but simply a polite pass for other people yeah, I totally agree. Like, I dig Flick Wars, and you pointed it out. I'm biased. I am a huge fan of dexterity games in general and flicking games specifically. As a flicking game, Flick Wars is brilliant. The thing is, if you don't like flicking games, you're probably not going to enjoy Flick Wars. Now, I will admit, it does add some strategy and tactics to a flicking dexterity game. You are still, though, going to win or lose not based on your strategy or tactics or what units you picked. It's a lot of it's still going to be based on your ability to flick a wooden disc over a neoprene mat. And because of that, this game is no way in any way going to be for everyone. Well, for a more in-depth look at Flick Wars, you can head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Reviews.